بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله In this video we will talk about the DC motor Okay, we will talk about the DC motor DC motor is a nice uh, topic for projects Okay, uh, it's very simple but it's very useful and the integration of the mechanical and the electrical, uh, electro, electrical, and, uh, electrical and mechanical system the integration between both this is the matter what makes the uh, what makes the uh, complexity of the problem. Okay, I will show you. This is the simple model of a DC motor. Okay, sometimes they call it DC motor, sometimes they call it servo motor. Same thing. Okay, this is the electrical part. You see, it's very simple, single loop, it's electrical system, and this is the mechanical uh, part. Very simple, also a single degree of freedom mechanical system. Okay, uh, rotor, uh, rotational system or uh, torsional system. Okay. Uh, now, uh, why we need this uh, DC motor? How they work? Uh, this is just for your information. Okay, maybe we need this topic, the DC motor, when we come to the control system. When we have a project, we want to design a controller for uh, a DC motor or servo motor. Okay, on that case, you will need it. Okay, because nothing much uh, really. Uh, uh, important regarding the analysis you see the, the equations are uh, very simple and it does not change in, in in any DC motor what's changing is your design for the controller for the controller all right all right now uh, I will show you uh, a quick uh, demo of the uh, DC motor in real life all right from YouTube you see this is a robot Okay, this is a robot. You see the robot? We need DC motor here. What will drive the robot? DC motor. Okay, this is an example of DC motor. Okay, all right. So let me show you what's inside here. You see the inside? He will show you now what's the inside of this uh, robot. This is the DC motor. You see that? It's a DC motor. This is the shaft. Okay, this is the shaft, the mechanical part. And the inside, you will see the... Uh, the uh, uh, electrical uh, part, okay? All right, so if you open the inside, let me show you what's in, in the inside. There is another uh, video showing what's inside the motor. Uh, this is the inside the motor, you see? Uh, this is the uh, uh, shaft. There are, uh, the, we call this the armature. The armature is a, a, a windings, wires, okay? There is electrical field applied, a constant electrical field. And the more current you apply through the uh, windings, the more power you will get, okay? All right, I will show you how it works. Just for your information, I'm not gonna ask about this in the exam, just for your information. And I will show you also quickly, this is the controller. You see, this is the controller that you will design if you are a control engineer, if we have a time in this course at the end, maybe we will have a project how to design a controller for a DC motor. Okay? okay. Your job, you see this, this is the block diagram. You see? Uh, we will talk about basically the basics of control systems. We will talk about it inshallah in chapter 10. Now let me go back to the uh, notes. All right. All right. Now, how the uh, DC motor, this is the shaft of the DC motor, and there are wires, windings, okay, uh, alongside the shaft. Now remember from physics, if you have a conductor carrying a current out of the page, okay, outward of the page, and you apply the magnetic field perpendicular to the current or the uh, cord, what will happen? There is a mechanical force perpendicular to both the magnetic field and the cord, okay? Okay. resulting magnetic field, uh, resulting mechanical force. So from this idea, from this uh, uh, phenomena, we will use them in a circle like this, the windings alongside the shaft, and we will apply a magnetic field, all right? So the more current through the shaft, uh, the current, uh, the uh, cord or the cable, okay, the more mechanical force, if this mechanical force in, in circle, it will make like a, uh, a torsion on the uh, applied torsion on the uh, on the uh, uh, rotor shaft. 
that will, will, will uh, make the shaft rotate. We call this, by the way, just for your information, we call this uh, arrangement of the gap and the uh, cords or the cables or the wires. We call them the armature, okay, the armature. So this circle, this circuit or this loop represent the armature, okay? All right. And this is uh, this represent the rotor shaft. Okay, you see applied armature uh, voltage. This is the resistor of the armature. This is the inductance of the armature. This is we call uh, back e EMF induced back EMF uh, voltage. This is the transition from electrical to mechanical system. Okay, and this is the torque. There is a torque that will drive the mechanical system, and we will say assume this is a theta. Or the angular displacement. This is J. If we have damping, friction in the bearings, we will add damping. And this is the mass of the rotor. Okay? Now, you will have one equation of motion describing the electrical system. One equation of motion describing the mechanical system. Okay? So you will have, in fact, you will have uh, five variables. Five variables. What are they, these five variables? EA, uh, EB, the torque, and theta. Okay, these are the four uh, variables, and we need one more variable, which is what? <coughs> the current, the current, okay? So we have four variables, so we need more equations, two more equations. Torque, this is the equation re uh, relating the uh, mechanical to the electrical uh, part, and this one relating the electrical to the mechanical. This is the torque, this is the current of the armature. This is a constant, depending on the uh, uh, values, of the uh, resistance, capacitance, whatever. You don't worry about it. For a given DC motor, you can find this constant. Also KB, it's a constant. You can find it, okay? So uh, how are you gonna solve this? You have four uh, equations. You have five variables. You take Laplace transform, okay? The input, usually the armature of the uh, voltage of the armature. And the output, either theta, if you wanna position your uh, uh, motor, if it's like a uh, uh, positioning the uh, robot, for example, a motor for the robot, or the speed, if you want to have a, uh, the output is the speed, these are the two usual uh, or typical uh, transfer function. Either the input, uh, also always the input is the voltage of the armature, and the output either theta or theta dot. Okay, you can do that on your own time. It's very easy, okay. But uh, just for your information, if you want to go from theta to theta dot in the transfer function, you don't have to rederive de re the equations of motion, redo the uh, problem again. All you have to do, just multiply. Instead of theta dot, it's going to be S theta. Okay. So it will be a first order system. This one will be second order system. These are the constant from here. Okay. It depends on other constants as well. Okay. And that's all for a DC motor, okay? Maybe you will need it if you uh, want to design a controller for a DC motor, okay? You can solve. This is how we solve it. The solution will be the transfer function multiplied by what kind of input you have. Usually the input for a DC motor, if you want to position the robot, usually the input is step function, step function. So the Laplace transform is E over S, okay? And the solution, this is going to be your solution. Okay, the DC motor, uh, there is not much to change with the DC motor. Okay, when you when you want to uh, model the DC motor, the mo the complexity comes from if you have a, a gear, then you will have the ratio. You don't have to worry about this. Uh, this is a good problem for control. Okay, for control when we come to control systems. Okay, if we take a, a project with the DC motor. All right. So this is going to be the end of chapter 6. All right. Thank you.